welcome back to my channel so today I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys some black owned author or well, black authors books that I have read or I'm currently in the process of reading now I will say this idea actually came from my grandmother because I was talking to her um, earlier this week and then she was mentioning like do I like read and I was thinking but I was like I have stopped reading and I don't know why because um, I used to read a lot especially as a kid like I have so many books that are still in my house but anyway, that kind of got me back to reading, so I picked up a book that I had purchased. I read like probably two pages and I stopped reading it for whatever reason, I don't know. But um, anyway, so I'm going to start. Make sure you like, comment down below, and you hit the subscribe button and hit the notification next to the subscribe button because that is how you are notified every time I post a new video. So, I'm going to start with the books that um, I've completely read already and then kind of work my way down um i'm just gonna probably read the summary or give you my quick summary so that i don't spill it out for um people who might be interested in getting books now i will say like i feel like my my range of in terms of genres of books has changed just a little bit but not too much um like i said i've been focusing on supporting black authors and like i've said I've, i'm gonna always be using my platform to support mostly everything that is black related so all these books I had before all of this I just never really thought of doing a video like this until like I said I was talking to my grandma so um the first book I have here is by Terry McMillan and I actually got this on Amazon I was looking for I don't remember what year I bought this but I know I finished this cover to cover like so fast um and the book is called Who Asked You so this is the cover And basically, how many pages? Yeah, this was 448 pages, and I read this straight through. Um, what I will say about this is that once, with me, when it comes to books, um, I have to be hooked within the first couple of pages. If I'm not, I'm going to put the book aside. But immediately, this book attached me. It's, from what I remember about this book, is basically about a fi family dynamic where a grandmother, she's pretty much raising one of her kids... Um, kids one of her her daughter's children because the daughter is kind of like her life is messed up and then she has another sister and all this stuff is happening but let me just quickly read you the summary in the back so it says when who asked you begins with Trinita who leaves her two young sons with her mother Betty Jean and promptly disappears BJ which is Betty Jean the mother already has her hands full dealing with her other adult children two opinionated sisters and an ill husband and her own postponed dreams all the while holding down a job delivering room service at a hotel her son Dexter is about to be paroled from prison Quentin the family success can't be bothered to let a hand and taking care of two lively grandsons is the last thing BJ thinks she needs but who asked her so who asked you so pretty much goes through the life of Betty Jean but also has parts where it talks about everybody in the story and it was actually good so yeah, it talks about all the, like, Quentin, so that's one of her sons. And it talks about pretty much everybody in the story and, like, something about their life and at the end what happens to everyone, pretty much. So this was a good book, and I read it to, to the entirety. And yeah, like I said, the author Terry McMillan is the, a critically acclaimed, award-winning author of the novels, the novels Mama, Disappearing Acts, Waiting to Exhale. How Stella got her groove back. Oh, so this was she a part of the movie? Probably. Didn't I never heard of her name. I literally on Amazon I was just Googling and I would read the pretty much like the synopsis of the story to see if it was a good book. And I read the reviews as well. That's how I got this book. A day late and a dollar short and getting to happy. I'm the editor of Breaking Ice, an anthology of contemporary African American fiction. She lives in Los Angeles. So yeah, so this book. I got it from Amazon and the US it's ten dollars so so that's the first book the next book the hate you give now if you have not heard about the movie the hate you give then this is probably oh this is kind of got the cover got messed up but don't focus on that I think yeah don't focus on that anyway so um I newly got this when I heard when I saw the trailer of the movie and I did not see the tr the movie until months, actually months after the, when the movie came out. I waited for it to come out, I think, on YouTube. And that's when I actually officially watched the movie. 
Now I will say, if you have not watched the movie yet, The Hate You Give, definitely read the book first. The book has so much stuff that was eliminated from the movie that when you read the book, the movie's kind of just like, uh, it was, the movie was good, don't get me wrong. There were so much things that was filled in the book itself where it's like, you should get the book first. Um, The Hate You Give is by Andy Thomas. And pretty much this book relates to what's going on now, uh, racism and all that, police brutality, this is the book. So if you have not watched the movie yet, then um, for sure, I think that's just my opinion to read the book first because the book talks about so much stuff um, that was omitted from the movie, but the movie was good as well. It did portray the characters. And I feel like because I read the book, I was able to know everything that was going on. And there were certain things that I remember reading in the book. And I'm like, that. well, they didn't portray that. So I think it's good to read the book. But pretty much to tell you a quick synopsis of what this book is about. Uh, this book is 16-year-old 16 16-year-old 16 Star Carter moves between two worlds. The poor black neighborhood where she lives and the fancy suburban prep school she attends. The uneasy balance between these worlds is shocked. Uh, is shattered when Star witnesses the fatal shooting of her childhood best friend, Kalia, at the hands of a police officer. Kalia was unarmed. Soon after Kalia's death is a national headline. Some are calling him a thug, maybe even a drug dealer and a gangbanger. Star's best friend at school suggests he may have had it coming. When it becomes clear and police have little interest in investigating the incident, protesters take to the streets and Star's neighbor's hood becomes a war zone. What everyone wants to know is what really went down that night, and the only person alive who can answer that is Star. But what does Star, but what Star does or does not say, can destroy her community. It could also endanger her life. Angie Thomas's searing debut about an ordinary girl in the extraordinary circumstances addresses issues of racism and police violence with intelligence, heart, and unflinching honesty. So, perfect book for now. If you haven't seen the movie. Um, or if you haven't read the Hate You Give book, perfect book to read. And I read this, like I said, all in its entirety. And there's the author, Angie Thomas, who wrote this book. So, Oh, and interesting, I didn't know that. So, I normally don't read the back yard freeze. I'm reading them now for you guys. But it says, Angie Thomas was born, raised, and still resides in Jackson, Mississippi. She is a former teen rapper whose greatest accomplishment was having an article about her in Write On Magazine. She holds a BFA in cre creative writing, and The Hate You Give is her, actually her, was her first novel. So that's cool that she was able to even make this into a movie as well. So, yeah. Okay, the next book. Um, so, I read this not to its entirety. More so because I think I kept on getting glossed. This is a book I feel like where you have to really sit and focus and you can't have noise around you to really understand to understand it. But this is another book pretty much um, dealing pretty much with slavery in a nutshell. And it's called Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. Um, I definitely want to get back to it, but I feel like I just need to be focused because this is something that I um, need to really focus on. Um, so let's see this book i did not purchase i believe got it free for some event somebody went to i don't know but it says let's see hold on i was trying to get the back oh yeah here it is so dana a modern black woman is celebrating her 26th birthday with her new husband when she is snatched abruptly from her home in california and transported to the annabelle himself rufus the white son of a plantation owner is drowning and dana has been summoned to save him Dana is drawn back repeatedly through time to the slave quarters, and each time the stay grows longer, more arduous, and more dangerous until it is uncertain whether or not Dana's life will end long before it has a chance to begin. So, pretty much, this is supposed to be Dana in the cover, and so I have to kind of go back. I do remember the part of the person drowning the in the beginning, but that's it. Because when I when I actually started reading this book, it was was it I believe it was. Was it last year? I think it was 2018. I don't remember. But I, what I do remember, it was 2018. Yeah, it was 2018. Um, what I do remember is I was in jury duty, at, jury duty at this time. 
so um it's kind of back and forth where sometimes it was quiet so you could read it but it's like sometimes i found myself like rereading sentences because i was kind of like i don't know i was everywhere so this is a book that i have to really sit and focus on reading and then the last book that i have which i decided to pick up again i had started reading a few pages and then i forgot about it i don't know why but um i'm going back to reading it i actually purchased it in target i don't remember when i got it but i know it's probably been i'd say it's been about a year since i got this book and this is opposite of always by justin a reynolds and just to give you the short so i was really i don't remember how i picked this book i think i was kind of just looking to see for black authors to be honest when i was in target because this is what it looked like because i didn't even know this was by a black author until when i looked to the back i was like oh yeah i must have picked it because of that um because i really want to support my community this is really why i do pick pick um a lot of these books but this specifically let's see but i'm trying to see if it has a uh So this is kind of like a teen thing, but I, I'm still interested in getting this book for some reason. Um, it just says, this book is about two teens who fall in love over cereal, about a boy stuck in a time loop, and the moments that make a life worth reliving. Oh, this is the same person. They look like different people. But I think it's it's kind of like, from what I've gathered in the beginning, it's pretty much kind of like a time story thing. Um, time story, time traveling type of thing um, about this boy named Jack Elson King, King of Almost. He pretty much, from what I gathered, is that he, in the beginning, his girlfriend is pretty much dying, and he keeps on reliving the same story. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much, I'm just reading the short synopsis, but just from reading the few pages that I've read over again, that's what I gathered. So he pretty much has time travel going on and he repeats stuff. And he was going to, which what, I think the crazy thing was about this story, like just to, to begin with was that he pretty much was about to get arrested but they allowed him to go to the hospital to see his girlfriend anyway like it was just weird um but i guess as the story develops then i would understand why like everything is happening so currently this is the book that i'm currently trying to read and finish and just to tell you a little bit about the author just show you yeah this is the author justin a reynolds yep and it says he has Justin A. Reynolds has been a pest control operator, night security guard, steel, man, steel mill janitor, NASA intern, salesman of a high-end fa faucet fixtures, and carpet flooring installer. He was most recently a registered nurse before trading his set of soil for a pencil, but he likes to think both instruments reveal the heart. He, likes, he lives in Northeast Ohio, home to Snow Lake Irie and the Cavaliers. So that's the book this is the book that i'm currently reading and this has what like probably 500 yeah 473 books so when i read books i like read long books i don't plan to read them i just always seem to get super long books like i said once the book if the book hooks me then i'm gonna continue reading if it's boring i normally set it down but this is my black owned author i don't know what i'm gonna title this Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Make sure you like, you comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.